Hey, Sabalayan. Hey, this is Bo the Mechanic. Uh, it's Monday. It's another awesome day in Tennessee. Spring is here. Pollen is killing me. I've been taking all types of crazy drugs. Took tons of Allegra, Benadryl, awesome eye drops. I got horrible allergies, so, you know, I'm toughing it out. It's Monday. I'm here. Lucky for you guys, I'm making a video today on how to install a CD player. Hey, back. Here, here we are, we're in the truck. I'm gonna show you guys how to go ahead and yank a CD player. Um, as you can see, here we go. This truck's had a really old tape deck in it for probably since like 1995. So we're gonna take this thing out. I don't know how it was put in. I'm just in here flying by the seat of my pants like you guys are. I know how they're supposed to be installed, but who knows how this thing was installed. Seems a little bit flimsy. As you can see, I can rock it back and forth. So let's yank it free and see what happens. Cool. Here, two screwdrivers. I got one and another and a pocket knife. Let's see what happens. Plastic, just a beauty ring. See that? Now, not all CD players or tape players are going to be as easy as this. A lot of them are really kind of kind of a hard thing to mess with. But like everything else, you know, anything that's cool takes time. If it was really easy to be cool, then everyone would be cool. And let's face it, all people aren't cool. Most people suck. But a lot of times, you know, what you'll see is, especially on this is so dang old that you're not going to see this. But a lot of times, you'll see a tab right here, and you could actually slide a screwdriver back in there and pop the tab open on both sides at the same time and then pull the unit out okay and I'll show you that right here on this new unit this is the new unit this is pretty common all the units you'll see probably from like the 98 newer maybe 99 as you can see right here is the tab that I'm talking about now if this unit was installed in the car like this you'd have to knock the tab here and the other tab on the other side here away let me show you how this works out. This is an anti-theft device to try and keep people from stealing your, your, your shit. Okay, so basically, once this thing's installed, we're going to bend these tabs free. Once again, this is, the, this is the beauty ring on the new unit. I'm just popping it off with my fingers. Yay, there, it came off. Now you guys see this is your... Uh, I'm just going to pull it free for you guys so you can see it. Okay, now look, this whole thing just slides off. Kind of like a condom. It's nice. Now this thing will slide in the car in this hole. It'll slide in there and we'll bend these tabs. You see how there's a bunch of universal tabs here? All these. You kind of just see where it lines up and then bend these things with a screwdriver up in this direction like that. Now you're not going to be able to yank this thing out without destroying everything around it, okay? So that's kind of why they're they're here. And so, you know, you bend these tabs back a little bit, and now when you slide this unit in, it'll just lock in place. Kind of like this. Imagine this was in the car. This fits snugly. I slide it in, and now it clicks, and I can't get it out. You cannot get it to click out unless you bend these tabs again. Bend the tab this way, bend the tab this way, and now there's nothing holding it. See, it'll just slide right out. The locking mechanism's kind of right in here right in here on the other side so long story short this thing's so old it's still got one of these but it's not really holding anything in i don't know if it's just so old or what basically that's it we're gonna now have to remove this plate we're gonna remove this plate to get back to the wires because the wires are what we really want and there we are just like baking bread now look at that it's coming out see and what i've done is Real simple. This was aftermarket, but you can see these tabs. There's one. There were some of the corners that had all been bent. 
bent in this direction and up and down and those those things hold this metal bracket in you see those are the tabs I was talking about right there 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 and they basically like I said they, they go up and they hold shit together now look in here oh look there's a bunch of wires this right here is an antenna this just goes to your antenna so an antenna we should disconnect it Okay, antenna's been disconnected, and now we need to get the wiring out. Let's see how they got it. Man, it's snug in here. They really got it nice and snug. Oh, there we go. It was just hooked up on some wires. Oh, look. Look how nice that was. See, look. It pulls out. I can just do it in my lap now. This is what you're often going to see. This is usually how it works. You know, they might not be connected here, but the wires just run through the center there, and they're just hanging out. So you can see somebody's done a pretty good job. Man, they did a really nice job. All this stuff's been crimped real nice. It really looks better than probably my work sometimes. And it looks like they used a maybe a wiring harness. This is actually maybe a wiring harness. They sell these. You don't need it. You don't need a wiring harness. But they actually sell a plug-and-play wiring harness where you could just plug it in and it plugs straight into your CD player without you having to do any wiring of your own. It's, it's good for people, I guess, if you don't have any working knowledge and it's just way more simple than, than, than anything else. But... You know, my, the purpose of this video is to show you that you don't really need it. And I can wi if I can wire it straight to a battery, then you sure as hell can wire it to your car. It's just a matter of figuring out which wires go where. Okay? You know, some of the late model Audis and BMWs can be kind of confusing. But, you know, whatever. This, is, this, this should be a good video just to start. So basically, before I start messing with any of these wires, you know, I'm going to try and stay true to what I told you guys. And, that, you know, I don't want to blow any fuses. And I hate doing it. And it's a bear to start looking for the fuse once you blow it. So let's just go ahead and unplug the battery. Okay, kids, hello. Now we review what we've learned. Uh, you know, we, we've taken the CD player out. We, we took the old one out. It is right here. It's it's junk. We're just chucking it out of the, out the car, it goes. Here's our wires. I told you I took the battery. I unplugged the battery. I cut all the wires to the back of the CD player. I don't know what's what. Okay, make sure none of the wires are touching each other. I plugged the battery back up. Now what I've got is this handy dandy test light. Okay, I bought this thing from uh, I don't even know Harbor Freight. I bought this from Harbor Freight for two ninety nine, a dollar ninety nine. Super simplistic, like I said, I think a minute ago. It's got a point in it so you can push it into wires. Uh, you can check for a positive va va battery voltage with this thing. Okay, and how it works is it's just a little light bulb. There's a light bulb inside here, like a little flashlight light bulb inside there. You guys can see it now. Just a little light bulb, and so if you ground this part of the wire, all it is is just a big thick wire, but you just ground it somewhere. You ground it on any bolt that runs through that's all metal. It needs to be all metal, obviously, so it'll conduct electricity. Find anything that's all metal, the pedal, the hinges, uh, anything in the car that you can find that's all metal that runs into the actual car. Stick this alligator clamp on it, and you're ready to go, and you're ready to test things. You're ready to test for a positive voltage. You're going to need one. Here we go. You ready? Got my test light. He is in the on position. Battery is hooked up. Stick it in this wire. Oh, whoa, look at there. Holy crap. Looky there. You see that? Every time I touch the pin of this light to that fuse, it lights up. And I can just hold it there if I want. So now the next question is, I've got power here. Let's see if any other wires do. No, 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 no. And, you know, again, I kind of thought these were speaker wires because they probably are. These are speaker wires too, they look like it to me. Let's check them. No positive, no, 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 no. So the only wires that have battery voltage are up oh, here, here we go. See this? Lights up, we got, we got voltage here and we've got voltage here. So my question becomes, one of these two is most likely going to go straight to the battery and one of them is going to go to the key and it's what actually when you turn your car on it actually kicks the CD player on for you you don't want your CD player on all the time so one of these wires is actually going to say hey turn the CD player on and one wire is just going to run straight to the battery and it's going to basically keep the information on your CD player such as your presets your bass your volume uh, your treble uh, your fader controls all that kind of stuff it basically just tells it you know hey remember this shit and don't forget it and it's hooked straight to your car battery as like a big battery so it won't forget 
Now let's see which one of these is going to be our, our, our straight battery. And I'm guessing it's probably going to be this yellow one. That's just the way it usually is. So now, I took my keys out. Bling bling. There are my keys. Not even in the car. Oh, looky there. Looky there. See, my test light's lit up. That means that this one, most likely, let's check the other one real quick. Oh, no. See, it's dead. It's, there's no power on it right now. So this one, this yellow one right here, is going straight to my battery. Straight to the heart of the car's battery. Somehow it's just wired in circuit. I don't really care how, it just is. Next thing that I want to figure out, now that I know that this yellow is a full-time battery supply. Right now I know there's battery, there's juice on it. So what I'm going to do is, this is real simple for you too. If you had never even, you didn't know what any of the wires were and you just cut all the wires, and you're like, I don't know what any of this is. This is how we'd go about wiring it. We know that this yellow one's got power all the time. I'm going to strip it back a little bit. I'm going to take my alligator clip free. Now, here's my line. See, it's not even hooked up to anything. Nothing at all. I unhooked it from what I was testing. I was testing for a positive voltage. Here it is. Now, I'm going to be testing for ground, and it's just as easy, okay? But instead of inputting a ground to this alligator clip, which is what I was doing, I was just grounding it to the body of the car. Now, I'm going to take this alligator clamp, and I'm going to attach it to something that I know is positive juice. This thing right here. This wire we knew was juice just a second ago. It's all the time on from the battery, straight to the battery, like I said. Now watch. That's why test lights are so cool. You, you know, they don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't need a voltmeter to like know how to use this. It's great if you know how to use one. I'm happy for you, but you don't even need any of that. So here we go. I'm just going to plug it up. Bang. Hook my alligator clip up, right? Now be careful. Now if you hook, if you touch that to any grounded thing, it's going to light up. It's going to spark. Okay, I don't want it to spark, so I'm going to use this little test light. It's going to tell me where the grounds are, if I have a good ground. Here we go. Let's see if any of this lights up. Nope. 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 Like I said, I think these are speaker wires. This one should definitely not light up because it's one of my power sources. Nope. Let's check these other speaker wires. I know they're not going to light up, but I'm going to do it just to show you all. Nope. Nope. No. No. How about this one? It's black. I'm pretty sure this is the ground. This is the ground for our CD player. Look. Let's see if it lights up. Oh, yeah, it does. So we figured it out now. We've already figured out those three main wires that I wanted to find out and I used to hook up just straight for the battery earlier. I showed you guys you can hook it just straight up to a battery and it'll work. And now we figured out which ones are which. We've got our switching source this goes to our switch we've got our hot lead straight to our battery which is going to control our memory for this JVC CD player and we got our our ground which is what we need okay now okay here we go got my wiring harness it's right here got my CD player the new CD player it's right here got my handy dandy these are just some strippers you can use whatever you want a pocket knife or whatever you want just try and make sure you keep the wires together now we're going to wire it up. Like I said, here's that yellow wire. I'm going to strip it a little bit so I can use it. I'm going to kind of do this redneck because I don't have any connectors right now. Uh, I don't really want to go buy any either. You can use connectors, little butt splice connectors they're called. B-U-T-T -T splice connectors. They sell them all over the place. I don't have any and I don't think it really matters. So now what I'm going to do, I got my yellow and I got my yellow. Lucky for me, they're the same color, but if they weren't, it wouldn't matter. I'm still going to hook them up because I know that the, this is my battery. This is my straight to the battery juice. And if it was black, orange, purple, whatever the hell color it was, some colors change in different cars, so don't just depend on the color to tell you what's going on. So if this is my to my battery straight lead, I'm gonna hook it up to my straight to my battery hot lead. Twist them together here. And I'm gonna tape them off. Just because. Cool. Now we've already got it hooked up. This thing's ready to go. This CD player will turn on right now. Okay? Let's hook it up. Remember? Just plugs right in the back. Whoa! Let's see what happens. Now, I heard it just spin over the motor. The motor to this E player just kicked over, but it didn't turn on because I don't have the keys in the ignition. Now I'm gonna turn the keys in the ignition and turn it to the on position and oh there you go. She's on. Now she's ready to go. All I haven't hooked up now is the speaker wires. So you're not going to hear any jams, you're not going to hear any tunes because there's no speaker wires hooked up right now. So that's the next thing we're going to do is speaker wires. Okay? So, 
That's just for proof and concept. It's, it's already on. It's already working. Okay, and now, you know, if we wanted a radio input, we just took the radio in. This is an antenna, and it plugs right to the back of the antenna spot right here. Let's see. There she goes. And now you have a radio. You have a working radio, working CD player, off the truck. The only thing we haven't hooked up is the, is the speakers, and we're going to do that next. Hey, continuing. Uh, this thing, this, I don't even know where the speakers were in this truck, so I kind of just, uh, took a break for a second and looked around, and, you know, garbage trucks aren't known for their sound quality, <laughs> believe it or not, and here would be why. So, here we go. Uh, we didn't have any speakers in this truck, here they're getting installed. I don't know where I'm going to put them, so I started looking around. This is where I think I'm going to go with them. This is a six and a half. I think, yeah, six and a half inch speaker, Pioneer, four ohm impedance, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to put them right in here somewhere, and I'm thinking like right in this area. Should resonate in the cab pretty well, and I took this apart, and we've got a little bit of an area there, so right in this area is where I'm going to try and get the speaker to sit. I'm going to have to cut a hole right in this area somewhere, so I'm going to cut a hole now, just with a razor blade, bling blinging, and... We'll see. Hello. Okay, so we're here, and uh, we're putting the CD player and the speakers is what we've decided. I've, I've decided that we're gonna have to put in here because the speakers that this truck did have were very, very, very small. They didn't put any sound out. So I got some new speakers. I got these six and a half, and I went ahead and I did the driver's side door just because it was pretty hard to do, and I didn't want to see you guys to see me get kind of frustrated. Okay, speaker wire has been run. I, I just. Stuck my hands in there, found some nice way to run it up underneath the middle of the dash, way up underneath there, and then I ran it out through here, and then I got my tail just dangling there, uh, you know, right there. So now I'm going to mount the speaker, and then we'll be ready to wire the CD player speakers up and have her ready to jam. Hey, we're almost done. Uh, so I went ahead and I wired up the uh, speaker wires. I, I ran to the door, the new speaker wires through the doors. I put my new speakers in. You know, with speakers, it's kind of hit or miss. You just find some place that you'd like to have them. Uh, Walmart sells some boxes for some 6x9s that you can buy, and lots of uh, Kmart, places like that. They sell boxes. It's actually a 6x9 wooden box with a carpet frame around it. You could have gone that route. I, I didn't choose to. I just kind of mounted them in the door frames. It kind of helps the resonation and makes it sound a little bit better, I think. But uh, take a look here. You can see that the speakers are, speakers are mounted in the doors. Got the wires kind of zip tied up so they don't, uh, you don't want them to get cut or, or anything like that. Here are my tails. You know, here's one of the wires that goes to this speaker over there, and there's a the speaker wire for over here. Might trim them up here, snip them up. See if you guys can. I'm just gonna trim them up. Okay, they're both about the same length now. Now all I'm gonna do is wire them up to my speakers, to my to my speaker wires. Cool. So here we are. Uh, let's get ahead and get this thing rocking and rolling. Here are your speaker wires. This is a remote wire. It's blue with white. It actually even says it. It's a remote output. What does it say? This is not the wire for the power supply. Please connect this wire to the remote for the amplifier, equalizer, or an auto antenna. See, so this, don't even worry about it. It's, it's not going to help you in any way. So these are all going to be our speaker wires. Let's see here. Let's see if we can count them. Green and green. White and white. There's one speaker, two speakers. Purple's going to be one. And then our grays. So if you guys can see that, I kind of split them all up there. It, you know, we've got... The white, the gray, the purple, and the green. And the rest of these wires, don't even worry about. They go to other stuff that you're not going to have to touch at all. This might go to your amplifier or something like that. And that's what that blue wire would have gone to. Like like the tag says, it says amplifier, equalizer, or your remote antenna, which we don't have on a dump truck, garbage truck. So now I'm going to choose, you know, which ones I want to use. And I think I'm going to use the white and the gray. I'm going to wire those up and kind of see what they do. See which... I don't really remember. Every unit's different. Let's see if it even says. Oh, it does say. Awesome. Here we go. This is better. This will actually tell us. So I'm going to choose the front and front left and the front right because it's going to be the front of this garbage truck. 
So the front speaker left channel is white and white with black lines. So I need the whites and then the other one, front speaker right channel is gray. So I'm gonna need the whites and the grays. And they're right here, whites and grays. Whites and grays. Now I'm gonna just wire them up as it says. Just strip the wires back and tape them off. Let's talk about something really quick too, and it's polarity. Okay, CD players have a positive and a negative, just kind of like your battery does. And so, you know, they're not going to spark or blow up or anything if you wire them incorrectly, but what they will do is make weird noises like RF, you know, kind of weird popping and hissing noises. You don't want that when you just installed your CD player and, you know, your new speakers. So, you know, for the video that I'm doing on just how to install a CD player, it's going to affect you because you want to make sure that all your positives and negatives are aligned. You don't want, uh, say, your front left speaker positive negatives reverse from your right side because, like I said, it'll make that hissing noise. But it shouldn't be that hard for you, like I said, because look if you look at these wires, I'm going to flip it around and show you guys. Now the wire, you can see there it's white and black. It's kind of hard to see. It's a white wire but with a black stripe down it. Okay, and that's going to be your negative. Anytime you see a wire like this for a radio and it's got a, a line running through it, that's your negative and the other one can be your positive. It's just a solid white line. It's kind of hard to see because the sun's so strong right here. For instance, let's just use this other one over here. How about the purple wire? Same kind of thing. Solid purple would be our our, our, our positive, and the solid uh, this, the purple with a black line through it would be your negative. So you just want to make sure that you get those lined up properly. It's not that you're know, going to blow anything up or pop your speakers or anything, but definitely when you put the whole unit back together, you would kind of notice a hissing sometimes or a noise, and that could be that your polarities are off. So you just want to be you know careful of that, mindful of that. On this thing, you know, the speaker wire that you can buy from Walmart, it's a blue wire, but it's also got a... see if you guys can see it here. There you go. It's got kind of a white line through it. It's a blue wire, see-through, but it's got that little white line, and so that's how I just keep things, you know, uniform. So my little white line stripe goes to my other stripe. So that way I keep my polarities the same. Almost done. There we are. Wiring harness is done. Showed you guys. I just twisted the wires together for the gray wires for the right speaker, and I twisted the wires together for the whites for the left speaker. Taped everything off. Make sure there's no wires just exposed. These are radio wires to the old wire, old radio wires. We're not gonna do anything with those. They're dead. And this one's dead too. So we're just gonna kind of shove everything back in there. Before we do that, we need to install our security plate to keep people from stealing it. So this thing's going to go in here just like that. And let's do that. Shove this bad boy in. Looks about right. Take our screwdriver and bend our tabs back. Let's bend our tabs back now. So... Tab back. Tab back. Cool. Kind of secure. Let's plug our stereo up and see what happens. And last but not least, took our antenna up. There we go. Slowly but surely. And our beauty ring would be our last thing. And now this bad boy trash can's got a garbage truck's got a CD player. Let's see if it works. can see the seems good let's see if the uh, key will kick it off yep so that's how you install a CD player in uh, anything in a truck on a battery in a shop uh, 
in your car, in your old pickup truck, whatever you wanted to do it, and that's how you would install it. You know, it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm Bo the Mechanic, and if you have any questions, or if you want me to do anything else crazy, videos, let me know.